Gude. Today's technical video is a follow-up because uh, the last video I have made was on Koki's Jupyter Notebook for dataset analysis. And uh, in the previous video I have set up everything for that complete Jupyter Notebook dataset analysis. So setting up the Python virtual environment, cloning latest attack from the, the Koki TTS repository, uh, satisfying all that dependency stuff and so on. So if you haven't watched my last video or if you do not have set up your environment, please do that at first because I will not do that one again. We will just go into it and I will set up or show you the new dataset analysis notebook. And uh, do you know that type of videos? They say click here or there or there or whatever to see the relevant uh, related video. And if they say click here, the video is probably anywhere on the screen, but not there. So as I am new to that whole YouTube and crazy stuff, I try to link a video anywhere in the place you see. So hopefully you will see it. If not, so check it on my channel. It's the last video I have made. Uh, that be, uh, being said, today's notebook is uh, again part of Koki TTS repo and it's uh, called Dataset Analysis or Analysis SNR. And obviously I had no idea. What does it mean? It's about dataset analysis because it's in that specific subfolder. But what is that SNR meant to be? So I did a, uh, made a little uh, research on the internet and I found it's the short form for um, signal-to-noise ratio. So it's a value describing somewhere the difference between the, the, the clear signal and the random noise around that pure, uh, pure signal. So, as you can probably guess, I, am no, I have no real experience on what that means. Because, and that SNR topic seems not to be specific for text-to-speech or audio handling in general. It seems to be relevant for all signal processing things. So, but if you are interested in what that SNR means in, in, in specific or in more detail, there are lots of videos available, tutorials, and really helpful stuff. So um, please check that out. By, out by, check that out. German guy here, hi. <laughs> so no, check it out by yourself and um, feel free to inform you about SNR. But that's it. Let's go into it um, and uh, let's see Koki's notebook on that. Jupyter notebook for um, SNR, signal to noise ratio analysis. I switched to my Ubuntu desktop computer, which is based uh, obviously on Ubuntu because um, there is one dependency called WADA SNR and I was not able to um, resolve that dependency on a Mac OS system. So I will use still my Mac OS for demonstration, but I will connect it to uh, my Ubuntu based system um, using SSH. So I use my Visual Studio Editor and I am connected to my remote Ubuntu machine. But as I've said in the previous video, I have set up a Python virtual environment. I cloned and installed Koki's latest version 0.3.1 uh, code base, resolved dependency and have run Python setup py develop. So um, I am into my documents YouTube directory. Let's show its content with my Python virtual environment. 
my dataset and Koki's text to speech repo. So let's activate my virtual environment and go into TTS Notebooks Dataset Analysis and let's run Jupyter Notebook. So once this is going to start up, I will open it in my browser and I'm now into that TTS folder Notebooks Dataset Analysis and we will give that check dataset as an R a try today. So let's check if we are able yeah, to open that up and open the notebook. In the note above we see two dependencies. One I've mentioned is that Weda SNR and the second one is FFNPEG. If you are on a Linux-based system, FFmpeg is probably installed already. You can install it on a Mac OS, which um, I did previously using Homebrew. So just if you are interested in using FFmpeg on a Mac OS-based system, simply run brew install FFmpeg. But this dependency I was not able to resolve on Mac OS. So for that reason, I switched to Ubuntu. So let's run that import stuff. Then set metadata. It's the same as in the last notebook. So you need the path to your metadata CSV file from the LJ speech file and directory structure. So let's run this. And this one. This is uh, defining a function called compute file SNR. Um, and this function will require that Weda SNR, which is mentioned uh, here. I have not satisfied that dependency because I would like to show you how to set it up. So, but it's working without an error because it's just a definition of the function. The function itself is not called at the moment. Which will <coughs> sorry, which will change in the next step. So simply choose one recording in your uh, dataset directory, which will be a sample file. So feel free to pick a random one, and then we will run that compute file as in our function. And as I have not satisfied the dependency that probably will return with an error. Yeah, as I said, because it's trying to run an external command in my base directory, data set analysis, which is VEDA SNR exe and then a VEDA SNR file, which is obviously missing at the moment. So let's go up. You will find the download link here. So if you click on that, we have a simple downloadable file. Let's copy it to my clipboard and open a new terminal here. As you can see in the in the error message, I'll show you again. Um, that Weda SNR is required to be in a specific path. So it's within Notebooks Dataset Analysis. And I will show you in the error message. It's looking for Notebooks Dataset Analysis, then Weda SNR. Please take care of the um, upper and lower characters. So let's take that Weda SNR and create a new directory, Weda SNR. And let's download that file. Copy its link address, download it. It's not a, a big file, so it should be really fast. And let's 
decompress it. So now we have within our data set analysis folder the newly created Radar SNR folder and there we have that Excel subdirectory and a Radar SNR. So hopefully, let's go back to our notebook, that is the path Radar SNR Excel Radar SNR. So that should hopefully be it. So let's rerun that command. Okay, so that worked without any exception. And let's run the next step. So my dataset has 8000 recordings. And now let's run the, the process. It will go uh, one iteration for each recorded file. So in my case, I will probably have 8077 iterations. That process uh, has been finished successfully. So um, we have 8077 iterations, as I said, each or one per recorded WAV file. Uh, so let's go to the next step. Okay, we have an average signal to noise ratio for that data set with the value 30. Okay, whatever that means, but the step by itself is running without any errors. So let's print out the recordings with the worst signal to noise ratio, so the 10 worst recordings. So we have recordings from the value 14, 15, 17, so it's not uh, <laughs> not ordered, so it's the worst files, okay, but it's 14, 15, so 16 missing. Okay, we have a lot of low values compared to the average of 30. Uh, and let's go to find the top 10, which have a value. Oh, that one is really good. 48, uh, 58, 57. Okay. So that's the top and the worst recordings. And now let's print a graph on that. So that is my complete data set with that 8000 recordings and the average um, makes sense uh, value of around about 30. But what does that mean? Okay, I have a nice looking graph, but I have no idea what is the message. So is my data set good or is my data set not good? Is an average value of 30 good value or a bad value? And what I think is a low value is worse than a high value. Okay, but what is it? From zero value on this um, x-axis uh, from zero to 100. So is a value of 100, is it a percentage scale? So zero percent to a 100 <laughs> percent. I had no idea. But the good thing is uh, in that notebook, in the top comment box, is um, the paper linked to that waveform signal to noise ratio. So, because SNR, as I said, is not a waveform specific part, but for analyzing audio and waveforms, that specific waveform amplitude distribution analysis signal to noise ratio is relevant. What I found out on, and I really do not understand that paper, really not. But what I found is it's not a percentage value, it's more than a dB value, so a decibel value. And after some research and um, 
chatting with my audio expert Dominic Kreuz. So big shout out to you, Dominic. Um, I think I understand that the value is the difference between the clear signal of the waveform and the random noise coming with it. So in my data set, an average value of 30 means there is a difference between the clear signal and the random noise around it from 30 decibel. So, but I have no idea, is that a good difference? So that machine learning can understand or can see the difference between the, the clear signal and the random noise? Or is it too close so that it's hard to difference between the, the signal we want and the random noise? But thanks again, Dominic. He always finds the right documents at the right moment. So he sent me a link to a PowerPoint presentation. I have no idea um, if that PowerPoint or that presentation is a good one or not, but it's about WADA SNRs here too. And the authors of that presentation, they say an SNR value with less than 11.5 decibel is saying the recordings are poor, have a poor quality. Then we have a medium quality range and all recordings with an SNR higher than 23.5 decibel are categorized as good recordings. So I have no idea if that's a good presentation, but according to that presentation, I would say that my data set with the worst recording with an SNR of 14 decibel is still in that medium range and the, the average value of 30 is a good value in a good recording area. So, I think that is the Jupyter Notebook from Koki Text-to-Speech Repository um, on analyzing your dataset for the signal-to-noise ratio. And as you have seen, the no running the notebook is quite simple if you have satisfied these two dependencies, so FFmpeg and the WADA, the waveform signal noise ratio tool, which is just to decompress and to move to a proper location. So that's it for the screencast. Let's go back to the camera mode. So that's been my video on Koki's dataset analysis notebook about signal to noise ratio. I hope you found it helpful. And finally, I would like to say thank you. Thank you to all of you who are watching my videos and giving nice feedback on YouTube, on the Koki community. So I really appreciate that. And I am happy that I can contribute a little bit to help on that text-to-speech journey. So thank you for all of your nice support. So that's it. I wish you a nice and pleasant rest of the day and we will see and hear us in future. Bye!